My name is Tom Knockholds um, and um, really pleased tonight that we're going to be um, hearing from a uh, bunch of people from Victorian Community Solar Alliance, Moreland Energy Foundation um, and uh, about, about the plans coming through from the, the, the Alliance and Energy Foundation Australia. Um, so before we get started, we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, First of all, we're, we're going to be recording this webinar. I've already just started recording it. Um, secondly, uh, we're going to do questions right at the end. So while the presentation is starting, do familiarise yourselves with the Q&A panel. Um, depending on what computer you're using, it'll be at the bottom or the top of your, your Zoom screen. Um, and feel free to start asking questions as we go, but unless they're real blocking questions, like they're preventing you from understanding the content, so, so we really need to be addressing them on the fly, we'll be do answering all of them at the very end. All right, well, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Kate, um, Manny and Yasmina, who are going to be taking the presentation from here. So um, over to you guys. Great, thanks, Tom. And I'll just say this is Manny here. <laughs> And Yasmina. So I'll, um, I'll just kick off because it's a little bit squashy for us all to get on the screen all at once. So hello everyone and um, happy Tuesday. I hope everyone's had a, had a great day. Um, and, and thanks very much for having us and coming along to listen to what we think is really um, exciting space in the community energy in the sector. So um, as probably most of you would have seen or maybe you've done a bit of Googling, but um, my name's Kate. I'm, I'm the Head of Business Development for the Moreland Energy Foundation and I basically look after a lot of our new projects and program um, design, new strategic partnerships, new commercial opportunities. But another area that I'm looking at is incubating some of our, our new initiatives and that is where the Energy Foundation Australia comes into. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about that later on so I won't go into, it, into too much detail. Um, Manny works with me at the Mall and Energy Foundation. So Manny works in the consulting team on a lot of our community energy projects but he also um, helps deliver on the Zero Carbon Evolution Program across the City of Moreland as well, many again. And Yasmin is one of the directors at Yarra Community Solar and um, they're really taking a lead in the Victorian Community Solar Alliance and, and she'll be talking um, a bit about the Alliance and also the toolkit program that we've been doing together. For those of you who don't know, I just thought I'd touch a little bit on the Moreland Energy Foundation and give you a little bit of history around um, what we do. Probably quite a few of you will come across us in the past, but um, we're a not-for-profit organisation that's been around for over 17 years. It was set up by the City of Moreland to help residents um, and businesses and schools and community organisations become more energy efficient, embrace renewable energy technology, kind of being the two, two core purposes. As the organisation's grown, we've worked much more broadly outside of the City of Moreland. We work um, across the state now and, and, and actually do quite a lot of work interstate and, and even national nationally as well. So a whole range of um, direct program delivery around energy efficiency and renewable energy, um, research and, and consulting advice all the way through to um, advocacy and policy work as well. So that's a little bit about the Moreland Energy Foundation um, and I'm going to hand over now to Manny to take you through a little bit more context of this project. Thanks very much Kate. And thanks Tom and Nikki and thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, so I'm just going to start off by giving a little bit of, um, sorry, we're just getting, here we go, just um, giving a little bit of background, a little bit of context to, um, to what this project is about, but more, but firstly, um, how, it, how it came about, um, why, why are we here, why did we start the Victorian Community Solar Alliance, um, what do we get up to and, and how do we lead to this toolkit? Um, so first of all, who's in the room? Um, we've got Mall Energy Foundation um, are leading the project. Um, we uh, obviously were the ones that, um, that uh, put the grant in, in our name, um, the grant application, but of course the Big Community Solar Alliance did uh, most of the hard legwork um, in coming up with um, our application and, and all of the ideas um, that, um, that, that we carried through um, to our successful grant application to do the toolkit. Um, and Energy Foundation Australia, which um, I won't give too much away now because um, you know, Kate's got uh, a little bit in store for us later on. Um, but uh, essentially it's um, an organisation coming out of METFOR that's going to um, look to deliver some really key 
um, some really key things to the community energy sector to help make life easier for us all, really. So just a little bit of background. Um, so the Alliance was born um, way back in early 2015. Um, really, it was a coming together of um, some community solar groups um, and, uh, you know, the context of the time was pretty tough for renewables. Um, we had just had a four years of a Liberal government um, that really didn't do anything much on solar, um, took a very hard line towards wind, um, effectively helped to shut down the whole renewable sector for most of that time. Um, so it was, you know, it was pretty tough times for some of the very early community solar groups like Rangers Energy and, and some of the ones that, that are in the Solar Alliance now. Um, so under that kind of context, um, I was working with Community Power Agency, doing a lot of community, um, community organising um, and advocacy at the time, um, as well as capacity building. Um, and myself, uh, Nikki and Jara from Community Power Agency got together with um, people here at Methyl, so Bruce Thompson um, and Paul Murford. Um, and, uh, and then a, a, you know, a handful of really inspiring, um, amazing community solar pioneers. Um, so Les Pratt from Yarra Community Solar, Linda Parlane um, from Moreland Community Solar. Um, there were some key people from Radiance Energy at the time um, and a number of other groups that really got together and just looked to build a united voice. Um, you know, and our key, our key um, goal at that point, I think, was, you know, we had a new government and we had a Labor government. We'd just come into power. We're talking about some pretty ambitious things in the renewable sector. And we wanted to make sure that they, um, that they knew about community energy, that they understood it um, and that they placed it somewhere uh, you know, preferably high up in their, uh, in their policy agenda for energy. So, so we got together um, in that kind of early 2015. Um, essentially, we were running uh, meetings out of this room um, every week or two weeks um, for most of 2015. Um, and um, as time went on, we, we got together, um, you know, around about 15 to 20 community solar groups um, who would, sometimes we had, you know, packed houses, sometimes there were three of us. Um, and, um, you know, as time went on, we, we, we put together the alliance, we came up with the name Victorian Community Solar Alliance, um, also known as the VCSA, or just the Solar Alliance. Um, and really what we did was we, we worked hard to engage um, this new government, um, you know, contacting their, their senior MPs, um, Minister for Energy, Environment, Deputy Premier, um, and um, essentially we, we did the rounds um, for, for quite a long time um, until people really knew <laughs> what community energy was. Um, so some of the key results, um, we, we met with um, the Minister for Energy, Lily D'Ambrosio, um, who was new into the role. Um, she, she liked the sound of community energy early on um, and we had some really good meetings. We had a number of meetings with her, um, her advisors and, and uh, departmental staff. Um, we held a lot of meetings. We had over 25 meetings with um, senior MPs. Um, uh, and right across the state, we, we, we'd essentially um, link up with, um, you know, say groups in Gippsland, Energy Innovation Co-op would, would help, uh, you know, essentially set up meetings and, and attend meetings and, and a couple of us from the Alliance would come down and help out. Um, and we essentially did that right across the state in Geelong, um, up in Bendigo, um, lots and lots of meetings in, in inner city Melbourne. Um, and as time went, as time went on, we we you know uh, essentially isolated a couple of key things, and we did we did a, we did uh, some policy development that um, that I think um, did contribute um, to uh, to a bit of a change and, and and much more support for community energy. Um, so just a just a little bit of a this is just a little take from one of our it's actually one of our more recent submissions but um, we did do quite a few submissions over over the period but that just shows um, some of the groups that um, have been involved along the way and, and are still involved today. Um, 
So as I say, we, we put in a number of submissions. Um, Les, uh, you know, was was instrumental in, in organising and, and herding the cats um, from, you know, these 15 to 20 different groups um, in getting not just input but sign off um, on, um, on what we were asking for. Um, so some of the key ones there probably to highlight are the general exemption or the GEO submissions, which were basically we, we highlighted um, a barrier, um, a barrier that Community Solar had to get through, which was essentially, um, it was very hard to get a, an exemption from getting, from having to have a retail license in Victoria. The Central Service Commission um, didn't take the same approach that um, the, um, that the Australian Energy Regulator does in other states, in New South Wales, for example, where it's or it's traditionally been much easier to get an exemption from paying uh, retail license fees, which can be, you know, uh, crippling for uh, for community solar business models. Um, so that was one of the ones we sunk our teeth into, and the other one probably was just making sure that community energy was front and centre um, in um, in the new energy jobs um, uh, grant. Um, framework, uh, which in the end we were we were uh, lucky enough to get it um, as you know one of the four main categories. Um, so as time went on, the uh, the twenty million dollar new energy jobs fund came out. Um, that was good news. The the general exemption order um, was uh, was amended so that um, community energy groups, if they could prove that they were they were genuine community energy groups, could um, could get a could get an exemption, um, and I think the other the other main thing that we helped to do um, was just to raise awareness with a huge number of MPs, um, staff, councils. Um, just as time went on, we 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 just spoke to as many people as we could um, to raise awareness and get community energy on the on the radar. And having said that, of course, there are a whole lot of other um, very important people doing the same kind of work at the same time. So that was, um, that was a good result. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll hand over to Yasmina in a minute, um, just to, to give a bit more of the finer detail on the toolkit itself. Um, but I guess the, the key, key kind of segue there is um, that, uh, so the Solar Alliance and METHIL um, did a joint application, um, secured a grant totaling 164,000, um, as part of the first round of the, of the New Energy Jobs Fund. Um, and that really signalled a, a shift from advocacy and policy design um, and community organising um, to really, you know, identifying um, where the barriers are in the sector, um, what's needed and how we could fill them. So with that, I'll hand over to Yasmina, who's going to take us through the toolkit. Hi there. So uh, I'll just start with just talking about who who these um, um, main uh, seven community solar organisations are. Um, but also, I'd like to to sort of um, outline the fact that these uh, community groups are are run by uh, volunteers. So it's really essential that uh, there are opportunities like this for groups to come together and to, to have this, uh, as Manu was saying, united voice and to be able to um, combine their efforts to, to, to work on a, on, on a toolkit, on a project that will be valuable to a number of groups. So this group in particular involved in the uh, Victorian Solar Community Alliance, but also beyond uh, the, the, the group, uh, the, the participating groups, the idea is that this should help other groups trying to do similar things and who don't necessarily, necessarily have the time uh, or the skill to develop all these tools that are necessary to um, implement uh, those uh, community energy projects. So, um, uh, the, the main um, community solar organizations that are working closely with MEFL and the EFA are Bendigo Sustainability Group, the Energy Innovation Cooperative, the Geelong Sustainability Group, Maston Ranges Sustainability Group, Moreland Community Solar, Surf Coast Energy Group, and Yarra Community Solar. 
Um, so these are the, the, the main organizations that are in, included on the, the various working groups working on the, the various aspects of the sort of toolkit, but well, um, we are working together with another uh, eight organizations that are also involved in at a um, broader, broader range on, on the project. Um, so um, I'll first start with giving you a bit of, a, of an overview of what this uh, toolkit will offer. So as uh, Manny mentioned, uh, um, um, the grant is totaling $164,000 and this is to develop uh, three main uh, tools. One is the, uh, the legal documents, uh, the web portal, but also training and communication on these, on these tools. So um, really the idea here is to try to develop all those tools that are, have been identified by the groups as barriers to implementing those uh, energy projects. And so hopefully by developing those tools as a uh, as a group, um, the, the number of organizations will be able to benefit from that. So uh, first of all, the legal uh, documents. So the objective here is to develop all of these legal documents that uh, will be necessary to implement um, uh, investment-based uh, solar energy projects. So um, for all of the um, for all of the solar toolkit um, um, tools, what I'll be doing here is sort of giving you an uh, objective of what that tool is trying to do, but also a time frame, telling you a bit about where we're at now. So this is very much uh, an, in, in under development. So um, we're still work, working out some of the uh, aspects, but also a bit, a bit more detail of what uh, the, the outcomes of, the, of those uh, documents or tools will be. So um, for the legal documents where we're at at the moment, we, we've uh, been able to um, um, identify a legal uh, consultant uh, who will be able to, to help us uh, work on the, 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 um, the design of all those dis different documents. And moving on to the ne next slides, these documents uh, include things like uh, solar power purchase uh, agreements, uh, higher purchase or lease agreements, so documents that will be needed when, when you enter, enter a contract between, with your roof host, uh, between the roof host and the community solar organization. Also documents that like the loan agreement that will be uh, necessary um, uh, when, uh, for the use of uh, the solar panels by the roof host and the um, uh, community organization, roof uh, rental agreement to access the roof host uh, for system maintenance, but also documents uh, around investment uh, offers. So all these uh, contractual documentations that will be uh, required for the investors. So another key component of this uh, toolkit is the web portal. So really here the idea is to, to create a, uh, um, an IT infrastructure for use for these uh, community solar organizations. And so there's two aspects to that, to that because the, the, some uh, organizations don't currently have a, uh, a website. So this um, uh, web portal will be able, so um, a, a WordPress uh, a white label template will be developed uh, for use for those uh, uh, organizations who don't have uh, currently a, a website, uh, but also um, all of the IT uh, infrastructure that is required to actually run the, the, the projects. So the time frame here is uh, to have this finished by early 2018. And at this stage, um, uh, we've uh, um, so we've entered a, a, a tender process that's closed on the 28th of September. And so we are currently, or MEFL is currently uh, assessing the, 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 the different um, uh, applicants and uh, we'll be making a, a decision as to who will be uh, conducting that work in the short term. And so just moving on to, so I think I've uh, already touched on uh, that. Aspect. So to go more into the detail of what the IT infrastructure will provide, 
uh, it'll give some information about the, the different models for investment or donation in, in those uh, community solar projects. Um, it'll, uh, as I mentioned before, um, it'll be providing a, a website uh, template for those uh, organizations that don't have one yet. But also, we'll be so those web, this website that will be designed will be able to link each individual community um, uh, solar organization website to the IT portal. That portal will be uh, able to then provide access to all of the, the legal and business documents. So the ones that we mentioned earlier, all of the documents that are going to be uh, um, um, developed as part of the first part of the solar toolkit will be accessible through that portal. And that uh, portal will also be able to provide some information for the investors, for the uh, roof hosts uh, as well, and also will be linking into the uh, back office tool. Um, I will uh, probably leave uh, Kate to talk more about the back office tool that will be managed through METHOL and EFA later. And finally, um, um, because we're conscious that uh, these documents um, so will be developed, so the legal and the web uh, portals will, will be developed, but only will they be useful if people are uh, able to use those tools. So um, we'll also be dedicating some time to, um, to provide training on those tools. Um, there's, uh, there's also a, um, uh, one of the, uh, one, one of the, um, the hopes of the project is to also be uh, doing a part of training on the uh, Frontier Impact Financial Model Tool, which is not part of this particular toolkit uh, and has received uh, separate funding from Marina, uh, but we'd be looking at uh, opportunities to, to also train people on that, on that tool if possible. And so that is very much dependent on, on the progress of other tools, uh, also dependent on, on the um, the, the the gaps uh, in the so uh, depending on the the um, where the different uh, solar organ organizations are at uh, what their training um, uh, needs are so we're currently in the process of uh, understanding what are, what are the needs uh, and we'll be tailoring the the tuning our trainings uh, based on uh, on those different uh, gaps that have that will be identified and so the priority will be to be uh, training those uh, seven participating organizations and it will be then the responsibility of those uh, organizations to mentor um, other groups and share the their their knowledge and and training capability with other organ organizations uh, trying to do similar work and I think uh, with that, I will pass on to Kate. Thanks, Lena. I'm just wondering if I need to check in on the questions at this point. There hasn't been anything coming through, I don't think, Tom. No. Okay, great. Just thought I'd check in before I got going. Um, great. So Energy Foundation Australia is um, it's pretty much a concept at the moment. It doesn't exist as an um, individual entity. It's a, it's a program of work, I guess, that the Moreland Energy Foundation wants, wants to pilot. And it's come about for a couple of reasons. One is um, at a strategic level, the Moreland Energy Foundation has a goal around um, finding and scaling up models for increasing uptake of renewable energy. And um, this is very clearly within that strategic priority for us. So outside of, as I said, outside of the work we do within the city of Moreland. Um, we want to, as an organisation, find ways to get this um, uptake happening, this energy transition happening as quickly as we possibly can. And um, I guess as, as a result of quite a lot of conversations we've been having with community energy groups and also community energy organisations, so not only is there the Moreland Energy Foundation, but as we see now there's the Yarra Energy Foundation, which some of you may know I, I used to be the CEO of a while ago. Um, the city of Darabin here in Victoria is also looking at starting up another energy foundation Foundation. There's quite a few of these kind of community um, organisations that are sort of starting up in this energy space um, and all of them are kind of, you know, um, setting up, in, you know, these sometimes quite onerous administrative functions and, and financial systems and, you know, all that, all that sort of um, organisational management and administration that needs to go on with running an organisation um, and then on top of that you look at what, what community energy groups have to sort of put together to, to get projects up off the ground. So what we were sort of thinking was um, 
was setting up, a, I guess, an organisation and, and ultimately a service. It's about doing all that kind of ugly back-end stuff. So we've got all these incredibly passionate, dedicated volunteers who are out there talking to potential rooftop hosts, potential investors, really activating the community, being the face of community energy on the ground. Um, and, you know, then you kind of get back to the office and there's this situation where you need to be setting up um, contracts that last for 10 years or um, quite sometimes quite complex investing, you know, investment models and, and those sorts of things. Thing. So we were sort of, as Energy Foundation come, Australia has, a, has an idea that eventually what we would want to do is just provide the opportunity um, to support community energy groups and community energy organisations as much as they sort of need to, to help meet, meet their objectives. So going back to the slide, um, yeah, like I said, it's really just about building a platform for local community energy groups and organisations to simplify their administration and really focus on the work that um, I, I think most of the groups are probably pretty passionate about and, and they're really good at um, around that community activation space. But, um, what we're doing with the service model is building um, a suite of services and it'll be like a bit of a pick and mix menu uh, for community energy projects or organisations to decide which of the bits that they've already got. So we don't need any help with the legals, we've got that sorted or, you know, and you can mix which services actually suit them. So things like legal templates, I mean, obviously they've, a lot of them are being built with the Victorian Community Solar Alliance project, but um, there'll be other legal templates coming on board, but there'll also be um, a role for us to keep those up to date. Um, the finance services, so bookkeeping, obviously accounting, um, reporting to ATO or, or to investors or whoever the, the financial stuff needs to get reported to. Um, insurances is a big one. We hold, we, we're running some really serious grants um, here at the moment. We hold some really big insurances. So there's an opportunity for organisations working through the Energy Foundation Australia to um, get listed within our insurance and that can be a, quite a big hurdle to, to help um, organisations and groups overcome. IT services, so you know some of those sort of really basic things, um, and IT, and really there's a like I said, how long is a piece of string? We're really open to hearing from people about what are the services that they actually want. Um, how do we cost them out? Obviously, at as at a minimal cost as possible. Um, that's probably another important thing to note that Methyl, um, as we go through this process and trial the EFA uh, service offering, we're looking at making it a cost neutral. Um, out of the, the business, it's not something we're anticipating we'll make huge amounts of money from, but we are, obviously, we do need to kind of make sure that it breaks even, basically, as well. So, okay. uh, so this is just a diagram that explains what I was sort of saying. What we're, what we're saying is that there's these community energy, um, community owned energy groups and foundations that sort of sit there, Energy Foundation Australia sits right at the back end. We won't have a public profile or a public presence. Our brand, our communication will all be with those energy groups or energy foundations um, that will be our that will be our constituents and um, then, then that will flow through to the broader community. Um, I don't think that the end of this program don't need any further explanation probably. I guess I'm just seeing a question. Hold on two seconds. Oh, oh we'll come back to that maybe. Shall we come here? Yep. Um, yeah, first question. I was like, oh, do we need to enter it now? <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, these, these are the things that we're looking to, to, I guess, drive out of the Energy Foundation Australia. We want to see an increase in renewable energy installed by community energy groups. We want to see an increase in the number of um, groups that, and foundations that we can service. We want to make sure we're delivering cost savings to our customers. So any funding that is coming into these groups and these organisations is going out into actual program delivery or uptake of renewable energy. And, um, you know, we want to deliver these unsexy elements um, like the financial admin and freeing up those times, you know, so that people can just be out there doing the stuff out in the community. I think that's the end of my slides. I know. So, um, Yasmina sort of um, touched on um, the, the tools that are coming out of the Victorian Community Solar Alliance project will sit with the EFA. So, the legal templates will be readily available and accessible to any groups, and they'll be, they will be Victorian though in context. So, they'll be completely free for everyone to, to access through there. There's a potential for EFA to become a, a, a space where we could house if there are other groups in other states that have done similar things and want to make their templates and things available. That 
could happen through the EFA and we're certainly open to having that conversation. In terms of their IT infrastructure and, and that um, investor portal that will be um, operated and maintained um, by the EFA, there'll be some elements of that that'll be um, free of charge and some of them will actually need to, need to come with a bit of a there'll be a service kind of fee associated with those and I won't go into, into it into too much detail right at the moment, but um, yeah, the, that's, that will, we'll, and like I said though, I mean, we, we are really, we go, keep going through the costing model and looking at how we can strip, strip things further. Um, well, yeah, so we'll finalise those legal templates um, and, the, um, and then the other sort of service offerings as well. So if people need, um, I mean, even up to office space as well is one of the other things that we can offer. Like I said, IT, um, finance, bookkeeping, all those sorts of things. It'll be, there'll be a pick and mix um, list of services that people can, can choose from. And what we're, we're hoping to do is um, launch in the first half of 2018 with our first group of projects and within the first 12 months to get... 10 to 12 um, projects and or organisations on board. So that's the EFA. Anything I missed? <laughs> no? That's pretty Great. Fantastic. Um, Thanks. That's, um, that's really exciting, exciting guys. Um, so let's get on to questions and answers. Um, and let's deal with Shell's question first. Will this amazing collection of information be readily accessible and able to be found by others trying to start up? Um, potentially being expressed that it's overwhelming to work out where to find where to go. A central database and information portal is needed. Yeah, so uh, I mean, as I mentioned, so the Energy Foundation Australia will have its own website and, and a lot of all of that free information will be housed there. And I think that over time we, that can be built into a more comprehensive, it will have a Victorian flavour to start with, but we would hope that that would get built into a more comprehensive, um, you know, service, I guess, going forward. Um, sorry, I'll just add a little bit to that as well. Um, because there was the element in that question about um, helping groups start up. Um, so the toolkit is um, it is quite uh, focused on groups who are ready to implement projects. So it's not necessarily that inception stage kind of level. It's the implementation stage, which is where we found was the biggest gap in the tools um, and the place that that we could add the most value as an alliance and, and as our organisations. Um, so I think it's fair to say there's some really wonderful um, groups offering different kinds of services across the community sector. Um, so, you know, I think between, uh, you know, the work that C4C and the Community Power Agency do, um, the various guides that are coming out, um, the small scale solar guide that is a part of, um, that this webinar is a part of, um, I think I think we've just got a suite of of, um, of resources now that just simply weren't there a couple of years ago. So I think as 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 people wanting to start up projects, I think where we've never been better placed. But hopefully this toolkit helps to kind of nail some of those very pointy end um, problems, um, like what is the agreement and how much do I need to pay to actually get this uh, suited to my project. Is it going to be a thousand five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, or is it going to be five thousand dollars, as some people experience? So, I think that's a that's a significant element. So, just following up on that, then, if it's being overwhelming, many where would be where would be the first place, I guess, for a group to go at that inception stage? Would it be C for CPA? Uh, well, look, I mean, CPA I think has been doing fantastic inception workshops uh, over the years. Um, uh, a range of, you know, I think. Most of the, the the successful community groups coming out of New South Wales had had some kind of contact with um, with CPA during that time. So, you know, I think there's that's absolutely right. Yeah. Look, I think I, I think I'll add something. This is a C4C webinar at the end of the day, and um, I think the C4C sees it sees itself as being an, an, a, a membership based organisation or or a, or a um, uh, uh, collaborative organisation where the community energy sector comes together to work on strategic initiatives and a part of that is sharing information. So I, I think it's safe to say that the information will continue to come from a variety of sources. 
So it'll continue to come from uh, individually funded projects such as this represents it'll, and the, and the um, uh, finance toolkit represents, it'll continue to come from existing locations where information is held. Um, but I think what C4C sits with is an opportunity to try and bring all of that together. So obviously the focus of what you're doing is, is solar, um, and there's probably an opportunity there for there to be a, a, a central clearing place through C4CE, which points everyone towards where the various collections exist mm. across the, a range of different areas. Yep. Solar, wind, or, or whatever the case may be. And, and I think we should embrace that complexity. That's not a problem, while at the same time seeking to answer the question that Cheryl, Cheryl's putting here, which is, is there a single go-to place? And we should try and kind of create a single go-to place, which is not the same as a single repository of where the information mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, there's no more questions coming through. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. And um, attendees, please, please feel free to pa pass anything through. You can be guaranteed that your question will be answered. Um, uh, uh, Yasmina, one of the things that was on your, one of your slides which caught my attention was, you may not know the answer to this, um, it said offline access database. Can you explain what that means? I'm going to take that one. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that, that was the one Yasmina said, Kate, you can talk about that and then I sort of, you know, it, it's quite, um, can be quite detailed. So it's an access database. So it's, it's um, we are using the model that's been built by this guy to sort of set up um, projects to actually be able to capture all the data that you need to do and actually spit out all the reports, et cetera, et cetera, for, for capturing all the information around having, you know, investors in projects and those sorts of things. So it's very much a financial tool, that offline database. Um, and what we will be doing is hosting, we'll, we're doing some work to modify that to better meet the needs of the Victorian Community Solar Alliance and, and their projects. Um, um, and then it'll be housed here at the Mullen Energy Foundation and then we're building this online portal um, that will, will, will feed information in and, and pull information out so where investors and community groups can actually go in and log in and see the status of their projects and their investments, etc. Et so, okay. um, yeah, I've gone through it in a bit of detail, um, but I'm probably not an expert in it yet. Uh, we'll be doing quite a bit of training with the group around the actual database. Yep, sure. So essentially the portal gives some access, some poor choice of words. The portal gives some visibility to that database, even though it is an offline database. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. And, and look, I mean, we love to share our, our system architecture, which um, we, we've had a number of iterations of and have spent numerous hours, um, you know, designing IT systems, which has been quite fun, actually, I've got to say. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, this project is under development where we're in the process of uh, appointing those suppliers, the web developers that are going to build it for us. Um, so it may not look anything like we think it looks now, but hopefully we've got the main um, components there. But essentially what we're looking at is a, an interaction between um, investors um, the community solar organisations themselves, um, potential roof hosts, uh, potential roof hosts, um, the information coming from uh, the solar systems themselves, um, and then of course this um, access database, the, the back office tool, which um, kind of sits relatively independently in a way. It, it doesn't need the portal exactly to um, to function, but um, essentially it's um, part of the, the METHL uh, finance department, um, which would be able to just spit out all of these financial admin things that people love to do, <laughs> especially in <laughs> our department. Uh, and that's a great sort of segue to my next question, which is, um, you, what background or institutional experience does METHL have in providing these sorts of back-end services? And I know that's a, that's a question. I've delivered that question specifically because I know you can speak to that some really positive stories about your experience. Um, yeah, so at, I mean, at a um, at an organisational level, I guess we've um, we've been auspicing a, a few community groups over a, a long period of time. You know, the Northern Alliance for Greenhouse Action is a really good example of that, which is an unincorporated association. When we've been providing that all of those back end services um, 
for like, how many years it's been, probably about 10 or 12 now, I'd say. Um, and at a kind of community group level, I mean, similar to the Victoria Community Solar Alliance, um, we have auspice a lot of those sorts of projects um, for, for many, many years. Um, in terms of the actual kind of running a community energy project, um, that's, that's a sort of relatively new space for us, but that's where we'll be working really closely with the, obviously the community energy groups as well in shaping the service to the needs, I guess, and the model that they're using, whether it's an investment model, an SPV, you know, a donation model, et cetera. I don't know if there's anything else. I'll oh, probably just the, the other bit of important information, I'm not sure we mentioned it, is that the two main um, the two main model types that we are uh, developing the legal documents for and also making sure that the back office tool um, can handle um, is the uh, behind the meter um, under load um, uh, SPV model um, and the cooperative model. So essentially they're and the reason we, we went with those two, um, we didn't want to try and take on everything at once, um, but also they're actually the two models that all of the groups um, in, our, in this uh, seven groups of participating organisations, um, they're the two models that, that the groups are using. Um, and obviously some, some like the idea of only having 20 investors, so they go with an SPV and they find it more nimble, and some really, really want um, as much uh, local community involvement as possible um, uh, and so they're running a cooperative model so we're making sure that the tools can handle both of those uh, dynamics that's awesome um, and uh, the these are all investment based projects is that the assumption that there's shareholders involved yeah so I mean I think I think the portal and the tools can um, can uh, can accommodate donations models, um, but again, of the seven groups, all are wanting to do investment models, but they're probably also all doing, um, you know, most of them are actually looking at donations models as well and, and setting up all kinds of things. So you look at, you know, like I think you've had um, Chris Lee from Bendigo on already to talk a little bit about the work he's doing and he pretty much wants to do everything and, and I imagine he will. So we've got to, we've got to keep up with, with the likes of uh, Chris and, and Dan down at Geelong, who's of course just announced um, their project, um, which is 150 kilowatt projects, an investment model project. So, you know, they, these projects are starting to roll out now in Victoria, which is great. Um, groups are getting their hosts signed up. Um, and uh, hopefully these tools can come in just at the right time so that they can uh, have a little bit, spend a little bit less of their uh, time and effort um, on the, the not so fun bits, um, but also, you know, save a bit of money on, on legal fees and, and, and everything else. Awesome. Oh, well, I think we are done with questions. Um, oh, one last question. Who's Les Prad, whose contact details appear to be on screen? Yes, so Les is, uh, is one of the driving forces of the Vic Solar Alliance. Um, he's been there since the beginning. He's a director with uh, Yarra Community Solar. Um, and yeah, Les is generally on, on all of the, uh, we've put out how many RFQs? I think five or six over the last couple of months. Um, so he's done a lot of work in coordinating the project. He's, he's officially a coordinator of the project um, and leads the, the portal working group. Um, and he's generally one of the, the main contacts. So we didn't want to break with tradition, even though he's not here. I'm sure he's listening and I'm sure he'd love to uh, hear from you. So get in touch. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Les. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, congratulations for the, being the shortest webinar we've done so far by about 10 minutes. And I think that's a really positive thing. So well done. Thanks a lot. Um, and any last comments from yourselves? Otherwise, we'll wrap things up. Oh, no, all good from us. No, I think just, I think it's like to say thanks for the people that uh, that tuned in, and um, and uh, I know quite a few people who um, who are looking forward to the recording. So um, uh, yeah, look, you know, get in touch um, if you've got any questions, and uh, particularly if you're a group developing projects in Victoria, get in touch. Um, we we've we've been. We've been deliberate in not um, reaching out to every community solar group. Um, we have had lots of conversations about this, but given that we're kind of really halfway through developing um, these tools, we haven't wanted to exactly shout from the rooftops. Um, 
not quite sure why we're doing a webinar in that case, but, uh, <laughs> but I think it is good timing just to get the word out uh, now that we're kind of appointing suppliers and everything, you know, we've got some time frames on things. So, um, and we have an architecture. We have an architecture, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll get in touch with, with the groups we know, but the ones we don't know, get in touch. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you, the three of you. It's been really interesting and I've, I've certainly learned a lot out of it. Um, everybody else, um, we still have a bunch of webinars come, to come. Um, it, it, we're looking at uh, a really interesting network, uh, mapping the opportunities in the network presentation um, next week and uh, get on to c4ce.net.au slash webinars to see the upcoming schedule and register for any that you haven't already registered for. So um, bye for now. See you next week.